Hey guys, here we are again with Brain Gains. I'm Dan from How I Stay Fit. I'm joined by Jake Weeks from Lena Stronger. And we're covering the topic of keto, ketogenic diets. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to make a ketogenic diet work. You wanna lead us off, Jake? <laughs> yeah, I mean, <coughs> sorry. <laughs> Just choking, choking, choking on, my, on his coffee. On my bulletproof coffee. Oh, it's bulletproof. Oh, right. Uh, bulletproof. Yeah. No, it's not. It's just a normal coffee. But um, yeah, so we, we want to talk about how the ketogenic diet will, how we can make it work, I suppose. And, and between us, we've been talking about how we, we think a cyclical or a timed, either we want to call it a low carb or a, keto, a cyclical ketogenic diet might work. Um, by that we mean having periods of the, the very low carbohydrate diet um, alongside one, maybe two carbohydrate refeeds during a week um, so you don't suffer the training declines in performance and quality um, that's regularly seen when you're going on to a ketogenic diet. Um, so we 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 thought of the idea, or not? We haven't thought of the idea, but we were no. thinking, thinking uh, yeah. that <laughs> actually maybe by having a day or two in the week to to replenish your carbohydrates uh, within your muscle stores, I suppose, um, may increase your quality of training, which may therefore lead to better training results. Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess you could do this uh, two ways, depending how. I mean, firstly, you could eat according to your activity levels. So um, let's say you trained uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Then Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you might want to have a carbohydrate meal just before and maybe after your training session. And then otherwise, just cut out carbs and stick to keto. So that'd be one way. Another way could perhaps be maybe call it a cheat day or a cheat meal even. So maybe just once a week have um, a high carbohydrate meal just to kind of top up on glycogen levels, which is your, your stored carbohydrates in your muscles so that your body will have some kind of carbohydrates to use throughout the week. It won't be relying just purely on ketones, in which case your training can certainly suck. And that's it and it's but it can work like that with that we can make it work I suppose right so yeah and then it's it's then choosing your training so then the next step in terms of making that work is then choosing your training and how you're training uh, to best suit it so if you're going to be going for super high intensity sprint work or high intensity weights like a lot of reps ketogenic diet probably isn't ideal for you because you'll be dipping into your muscle glycogen stores. Whereas, again, our thoughts are taking us on the idea that maybe you want to stick to a more of a strength power type training protocol because it's less reps with high efforts, but due to less, you know, due to less re reps, um, you won't be needing the muscle glycogen quite so much uh, in comparison to someone doing a higher rep scheme. Um, yeah, so we were thinking along those lines. Yeah, I mean, um, what, what's, what's going to use more carbohydrates? Uh, doing a, a set of 20 squats or doing a set of two? <laughs> yeah, precisely. That's, that's one way to look at it. Yeah. So, yeah, so you, you could just follow a, a predominantly uh, low rep strength training program and, and that could be one way to work around uh, a ketogenic diet. And then, uh, you know, so that would be how we would structure our, our diet in terms of macros and, and stuff and the training protocol. But then we were thinking, how can we make the diet not so boring? I mean, we've, we've said previously that you end up eating very similar foods a lot of the time. And that, be that becomes mentally mundane and, and boring, essentially. So use some flavors. Try different flavors of spices, sauces. Um, Providing they're low carb, of course. So oh, of course, probably yeah. more the spices, more so, um, and flavour your foods differently, which will keep you, I suppose, psychologically less bored and more into your regime with the ketogenic stuff. 
that, that is such an important point. Um, which, uh, I mean, I, I always make the argument, like say you're following any diet, generally you're gonna be eating the same foods over and over again anyway. It's just how it's prepared that makes it different. Um, you know, so for example, like sp spaghetti bolognese is, ex is essentially lasagna, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it, it looks different, it, it's made a bit differently, but you've, you've got your meat, you've got your pasta sauce, and you've, you've probably got some cheese and stuff on top. So you can make that comparison to pretty much like any meal, whether it's a diet food or not. Um, so it's all just about changing how it's prepared slightly, changing the taste, changing the flavor. So I think that's a great point. Yeah. And it's all, all of that boils down or ends up with you adhering to your program. And long ter longer term adherence will lead to better results because you'll be more consistent. Um, yeah. So they're, they're the main points really of, of how we can make these ketogenic diet works in terms of cycling, your, I suppose your carbohydrate refeed days and stay low, low carb for the rest of them. Um, think about your training regime and protocol. So switch more to a more strength-esque program um, and try and be creative in the kitchen. Try and make your foods less, less samey, more interesting um, to keep you going and keep working at it. No, definitely. So, I, yeah. I think that sums it up. Um, I've got one last point. Just don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, that's up to you. Do it if you want to do it. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. So uh, until next time, thanks for watching.